Hey, this is Nathan here at Empire BMX in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to do a brief demonstration on how to build a complete BMX bike. This is the same process we use on all of our complete bikes here at the shop. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's a basic example of some of the tools required for most BMX complete bikes. Tools may vary slightly based on the brand or model that you've selected from our web store. Recommended tools for each brand are listed in the description of this video. When you purchase a complete bike from Empire, it should arrive looking similar to this. If you have a bike repair stand, you can use it at this time, although it is not totally necessary. Remove all of the zip ties and packing materials from the bike. When I build a bike, I like to start from the front of the bike and move towards the back of the bike. That way I make sure that no steps are left out in the process. So let's start with installing the handlebars. Remove all four stem bolts and apply plenty of grease to the threads of each. Be sure that no grease gets onto the clamping area of the stem. Rest the handlebars in the stem and thread all bolts most of the way in evenly. At this point, center and adjust the handlebars to the desired angle. If you're unsure of the angle, parallel with the forks is usually a common position. To properly tighten the stem, it is important to tighten the bolts in an X pattern across the faceplate of the stem. This ensures an equal amount of torque on each bolt and an even clamp across the faceplate of the stem. Be sure that there's an even gap on either side of the faceplate. Now we can put on the front wheel. If the bike you ordered came with pegs, you will need a socket and extension for this step. If not, a 15 or 17 millimeter wrench will do the trick. It's important to note that many tires have a directional tread. They generally have a V-shaped tread that should point towards the front of the bike. Remove the axle nuts or bolts on either side of the wheel and make sure there are axle washers on either side. Insert the wheel into the forks, being mindful of the tire direction. Be sure the wheel stays centered and is all the way up in the dropouts. Evenly tighten each bolt little by little until the wheel is fully torqued. Now for the seat. There are three types of seats common on the complete bikes that we offer. Tripod, pivotal, or fixed. If you have a tripod or pivotal, use an allen key at this time to install your seat onto the seat post at the desired angle. Use a bit of grease on this bolt. Next, you'll want to apply plenty of grease to the inside of the seat tube and also to the seat post clamp bolt. Note that most seat posts have a minimum insertion point, which will be clearly marked. Never ride with the post above this point. Adjust the seat to the desired position and use an allen key to tighten up the seat post clamp. Next, we'll install the pedals. This step calls for a 15 millimeter open end wrench, or if you have one, we like to use a pedal wrench to get a little extra torque. It's important to note that there is a left and a right pedal. They will clearly be marked with an L or an R on the end of the spindle. Make sure that you do not install them backwards or you will cross thread and damage the cranks. Use plenty of grease on the pedal threads. Both the right and the left will tighten turning towards the front of the bike. Start with the right pedal and begin by finger tightening the pedal onto the crank arm. To speed up the tightening process, you can back pedal the cranks to tighten them. Be sure to use plenty of torque when tightening each pedal. For the cranks, we recommend re-greasing all of the bolts and the spindle of the crank set. Properly greasing these bolts will allow them to have more torque and as your drivetrain wears in, you'll experience less creaking and wear caused by friction. Remove the crank compression bolts and pinch bolts. Apply grease to these bolts. If applicable, remove sprocket bolt and grease it as well. Removing this bolt will allow you to remove the crank arm on this side. Remove crank arms and apply grease to the spindle and the spindle boss of the crank arms. Place the crank arms back onto the spindle, being sure that the cranks are lined up evenly. Replace the sprocket bolt Install the compression bolts. Next, install the pinch bolts and torque them. Before we can move on to the brakes, we need to be sure that the rear wheel is center and that the chain has proper tension. There should be an even amount of space between both sides of your tire and the frame. The chain should not be too loose so that it has lots of flop and play, but also not too tight so that it has lots of friction. If your wheel is not in the desired position, loosen the axle nuts. Pull the wheel back in the dropouts with the wheel center. Tighten each axle nut back and forth little by little until fully torqued. When your wheel is positioned correctly, use plenty of torque on both of the axle nuts or bolts. 
Now we're ready to adjust the brakes. For our demo purposes, we'll set up a brake that's a bit more hands-on. The brake lever is a good place to begin your adjustments. Reposition the lever at an angle that the rider prefers. If you have some, put a few drops of lube in the cable. To attach the brake cable to the lever, be sure the brake is disconnected by detaching the straddle cable. Loosen the barrel adjuster, lining up the cut with the cut in the lever. Insert the barrel end of the cable into the lever and feed the wire through the cut in the brake lever. Tighten the barrel back down and reconnect the straddle cable. At this point, we can adjust the brake pads. The pads should contact at the center of the braking surface. They should not rub the tire or be falling off the rim. For optimal braking power, we want to tow or angle the brake pad ever so slightly so that the front of the pad contacts the rim first. Once you get each pad positioned correctly, be sure that they are very tight. Now we will adjust the spring tension. This step takes a 5mm Allen and either a 13, 15, or 17mm wrench. Our goal is to adjust the spring tension evenly so that each pad contacts the rim simultaneously. To adjust the tension, place your wrench and Allen key onto the brake spring like so. Begin by loosening the Allen key. To increase the tension, turn the spring towards the front of the bike, and to decrease the tension, turn the spring towards the back of the bike. Make this adjustment on both of the arms until the amount of tension is to the rider's preference and the pads contact the rim evenly. Now we can adjust the amount of cable pull. This can be adjusted using the barrel adjusters on some brake setups, but we recommend making these adjustments with the cable hanger or the straddle cable, if your bike has this option. Both methods are acceptable. You can move the cable hanger forward or backward on the brake cable to increase or decrease the cable pull. It is easier to make this adjustment with the straddle cable disconnected. Once the straddle cable is how you like it, be sure the bolt is tight. To make this adjustment using the straddle cable, be sure that the cable hanger bolt is tight before you begin. Increase or decrease the amount of pull by pulling more or less cable through the straddle cable bolt or cable nart. It can be easier to make this adjustment by either holding the brake arms closed or while the straddle cable is disconnected. Once you find that sweet spot, be sure to fully tighten the bolt or nart. The final touch is to trim any excessively long cables and crimp on your cable tips. At this point, we'll take the bike out of the stand. The rest of the adjustments are usually easier made on the floor. Attach the cable tie or zip tie to the brake cable. Install reflectors as you wish. To adjust the headset, we'll start by removing and re-greasing the stem pinch bolts and the headset compression bolt. Reapply these bolts without fully tightening. Start by tightening the compression bolt. This is a very low torque bolt. It's designed to hold just enough pressure on the headset bearing so that, that there is no movement and that your bars can still spin freely. Be sure not to over tighten this bolt or it can affect the steering and damage the bearings. Once you have the compression bolt adjusted, line up the stem so that it is in line with the front tire. Once straight, secure the pinch bolts by tightening each bolt little by little until fully torqued. The final step is inflating the tires. Check the recommended tire pressure for your tires which will be clearly listed on the sidewall of your tire. We recommend that you begin by inflating your tires to 20 or 25 PSI and check that the bead of the tire is seated on the rim. There should not be any bulges, any high, or any low spots. If not fully seated, adjust the tire accordingly or deflate and try again. Once seated, inflate the tire to recommended tire pressure. Next step is to go out, ride your bike, and have some fun. Thanks for supporting Empire. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below or check the details for any more additional info. We'll see you next time.